Today, we take an important step on that journey. From today onwards, no child will ever be denied senior high school education simply because his or her family is unable to afford it. The Free SHS has seen the enrollment of hundreds of thousands of people, boys and girls, who would otherwise not have been able to attain senior high school education. This claim is right to some extent. This is because the policy, according to the government, has produced the best WASI result in the last eight years. Aside from this, it has achieved the very goal the Ekofodro administration set out for itself when they proposed the policy. According to the Ministry of Education, the 2017-2018 academic year saw the highest enrollment in the country's history with 470,000 students gaining access to secondary education. Since the program was rolled out in 2017, over 2.5 million students have benefited from the program. This 2023-2024 academic year recorded the highest enrollment yet, with 500,000 students placed under the program. And in 2019, I wrote my BEC and I passed. I was admitted in Maoli School, which was last year. I want to thank the government. I know it's not only me that is going through this and because of the free SHS, I've come back to school. By a Libra, I was three. It is without doubt that the free SHS policy has made it possible for children whose parents could not have afforded secondary education to have the opportunity to continue their education. But a key component of the policy that cannot be overlooked in ensuring that children enjoy the implementation of the program is feeding. A grim reality that many are hesitant to speak about. They'll give you bread, they'll give you budget and sugar to do the bread. Sometimes they'll give you budget and, and, and sugar. They'll give you the flour. Sometimes they'll give you curry, they'll give you beans. They'll give you beans, they don't give you the curry. So you want to wonder how are you going to combine? They'll give you tin tomatoes, they will not give you. You'll get mackerel, you will not get tin tomatoes. You'll get sardine, you'll get mackerel. It is for this reason I go undercover in the country's senior high schools in the Western, Greater Accra, Northern, Oti and Central regions to investigate the irregular supply of food items by the government and the dire consequences faced by thousands of students. My name is Kweti 
Nati. supposed to have three bags a day to feed 900 students of rice. If it is the five days, that is 15 bags per week. Go and check the rice that they are giving to us. When the free SHS policy began, food supply to schools was in abundance. The situation is no longer the case. Irregularities in food supply are an open secret, discussed in WhatsApp groups among senior high school heads and free SHS coordinators. My own filtration into these platforms has revealed desperate messages from schools across the central region, including Infantipim School, Adesado College, in Saba Presbyterian SHS, Asin Manso SHS, and the Brahman SHS urgently requesting adequate food supplies. Here in the central region, the harsh reality comes to life. A dining hall prefect, Sambali, informs first year students of the insufficient food supply. Their meals are reduced to simple, often nutritionally inadequate options. This situation is not unique to the central region, but is echoed across schools in other regions. We have no food at the school. And the master is in Accra now, fighting for food, for our own benefit. So we are pleading with you to manage the little here. And we promise you very soon there will be enough food for us, so that we can all enjoy ourselves. Thank you. Entire school communities are despondent. Worry is visibly written on the faces of hundreds of students especially those first-year students who are experiencing life outside the comfort of their homes for the very first time. This dietary monotony was particularly challenging for some, a student I met at University Practice Senior High School, who described it as his toughest experience. Which food has been the bad? This one, you, you just rejected it, you did it after tasting the first one. Gary and soup. Gary and soup. Why? What was wrong with it? It was small and it was not nice. It was small and it was not nice. But did you complain? Have you guys been complaining? Mm. You have not been complaining. Every night, Sam and his peers are haunted by this grim reality. These children go to bed burdened with thoughts about what they will eat when they wake up to a new day. It is no fault of theirs that the government that promised their parents free education is unable to provide enough food to feed their youthful appetites. This issue extends beyond the central region as school authorities from several senior high schools in the Upper West region have also shared with Joy News. We, what we experience generally across the country is that occasionally we come under a bit of a pressure. Um, occasionally you may have a shortage of this or that. In fact, the biggest problem we have is schools generally not having all the consignment of food that they need at a go. And what I mean is that you have one point in time you have rice in large quantities. On the other hand, you do not have maize. You do not have, uh, you know, uh, granuts. You do not have uh, all the other items. So the temptation and the only way out is to utilize the rice. So at the end of the day, you may have large quantities of rice and in no time you exhaust it. And uh, other times you actually run into very critical um, situations where it is even out of the way. I, I remember just, uh, you know, my school is a double track school. 
Um, shortly before the farm trees and the farm trees went, um, uh, we actually ran on food supply. It got to a time that if some consignment had not arrived uh, within two days, uh, uh, we are virtually not be feeding the students. Currently, there are feeding challenges. Honestly speaking, we don't have food. We don't have. Since we opened, we're giving food for three weeks. We exhausted it. Last week, we went back for 30 bags of rice. But these 30 bags, if I have all my population on campus, I take 20 bags a week. The second, the second years and third years are on campus. I take 15 bags a week. So it means that the 30 bag will do for only two weeks. The rest of the food items, uh, gari, soya bean, maize, and the re a lot of them are not, are not available. They feed in the feeding the, 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 the old challenges. Uh, we say we say have the old challenges, but uh, last week we were we were given 35 bags of rice. At least they have also made some small payment for perishable that we can buy the perishable. But the challenge will be the buffer stock items. So when school reopen, we give you some few items. We depended on that up to a point. Last week, which they brought in the assets, we went for uh, some rice. We went for 35 bags of rice, so that's what we are managing on for now. Many school heads are hard pressed in their bid to feed the students properly. But the stark reality is they can only offer the students what government supplies. Kwesi Kwating speaks for the Education Ministry. He disagrees there are food shortages within the schools. Uh, in terms of food shortage uh, occasioned by irregular supply of food from buffer stock, uh, we've not had any formal complaint of course unless of course we are able to get the list of those schools quickly we intervene i've always insisted that our duty as leadership is to always intervene when there are challenges of course leadership is not there <laughs> because uh, uh, to to immune ourselves from challenges my visit to Tripone senior high school in the northeast region reviews students being served meals that barely meet nutritional standards <laughs> but if you had an opportunity, which food would you have taken? Rice, yam, which food would you have taken? Yeah, we were you giving milk? Mm. No milk. Mm. Oh. In the afternoon, what did you take? Sometimes they prepared tea without milk. With our bread, and then the afternoon, either today we take rice and beans. Every day, rice and beans. Wow. The whole of this time, yes. it's either tea that in the evening. Yes, yes. rice put it in the afternoon or beans in the afternoon. Wow. You see that today they will give us rice, tomorrow beans, tomorrow next rice, tomorrow next beans. The students tell me their joy will know no bounds the day they will be served jollof rice with fish or chicken. But they know it is a pipe dream. Under the policy, residential students are supposed to benefit from three square meals while non-residential ones get one hot meal. In some schools, the investigative team observed that between 8 to 15 students were assigned to a table to share a meal. The picture is no different at the Ahantaman Senior High School in the Western Region. These first-year students who thronged the dining hall were expecting to be served a breakfast that was balanced in nutrition. But that isn't the case. What they had was porridge without milk and bread. The challenge has been that my daughter is constantly complaining that the food they are fed with is not enough. I've taken the pains to also provide uh, enough food, like Gary and others, that she can eat from her chop box. But uh, it turns out that the school has, parents of this school have come together to get uh, support for the school. So we contribute uh, some amount of money. We're supposed to contribute twice in a term, that's 500 CDs for the first half and the other half. Uh, we another five he tried to support 
but because of government initiative, it's difficult. So for me, I sometimes, let me put in quote, smuggled food to the school for my, for my ward. And another concern is uh, their food. To be frank, they are not eating any better food at all. So every time she will call, that mommy, I don't have money. The food is not enough and sometimes it's not even good. To, to be frank with you, this girl left home without stomach pain. But now she will call that mommy my tummy. She has been admitted at the hospital. They did other tests, but she said the doctors are so, so, uh, suspecting his ulcer. It is very bad. We are not saying they should not eat Gary, but the Gary is too much. They are not fed properly. They are made to work like horses. Like, I don't know. In fact, I think this is the second prison yard. Even the prison, those in the prison, I don't think they go through what these girls are going through. As for school, you cannot have it like you have it in your house. I, I cannot tell you. If I tell you that I'm, I'm, I'm happy with the culture of the food, as expected, uh, no, I'll be telling lies. It's not out of standard, but as students, they will have, have to manage. Yes, they have to manage. Uh, okay. Like I said, it's everything that adds up to the quality. Um, if you do not have mackerel at a point in time, and you're supposed to have it, it will, the quality of the food will not be right. If you do not have tin tomatoes, and sometimes we run out of these things. There are times you do not have the tin tomato, you may not have a mackerel, and the metros will have to manage. So, of course, that speaks to the, the quality. Um, I think it could have been better. At the Achimoto School, the students have been served fried rice and sauce. The food appeared to have less nutritional value. Some of the students complained about the quantity of what they've been served with. It's all about the quantity, the, the, the general tools quantity, mm -hmm. also, mm -hmm. and then the amount of sauce they serve per table, mm -hmm. the assistance with mm -hmm. so the amount of sauce is like, this the pound of the sauce, mm -hmm. and it's very sweet. I have named the student Kweku for anonymity. He rates the meals they received a mere 5 out of 10. Kweku recalls the beans and oil served in the dining hall as the most unpalatable meal he's ever had. The memory of its unpleasant odor still vividly lingers in his mind. At Accra Academy, students frequently receive meals like rice with stew. However, on occasions when they are served beans, it notably lacks accompaniment like ripe plantain. Similarly, when kinke is provided, it often comes without fish. They give us rice. Rice with stew. And sometimes beans without plantain. And sometimes kinky. The kinky they give us stew or shit or with no fish. But me, I'm a. This one, so I don't eat kinky. Uh, three. We go for food three times a day breakfast, lunch, and supper. And we sit. In groups eight, eight in one bench, and then share Mr. Quarting again. He said it isn't procedural for a school to feed children with repetitive meals. It will be very uh, surprising to to see that a school is being fed repetitively on a particular meal. That is not the norm. Even granted without admitting that that is the challenge that maybe a school may face. First of all, I will, I will see it as one isolated incident. But obviously, whether isolated or even is a general issue, our duty is to be able to go and resolve it. And quickly, we prompt the agency responsible for that. And then we make sure that whatever supplies that needs to go, have to go. Experts, including clinical psychologists and educational researchers, emphasize the importance of a balanced diet for students' physical and mental well-being. Unfortunately, the current food situation in schools falls short of these requirements. Clinical psychologist Dr. Nyako says a balanced diet is very important for the brain's development of students. According to him, a variety of food doesn't only nourish the brain, but enhances health. 
We know that the best foods for brain development or for those who do mental work are fruits, vegetables, grains, nuts, seeds, and leaves. These are the components of food that should be given to our kids in, 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 the, in the various schools. Because if we don't do that, and we tend to give them poor diet, um, to give them poor blood, to give them poor diet, a result in poor blood, and then poor brain output, because the blood is feeding the brain. But these are foods that weren't found on any of the dining tables of the schools we visited. Back to the online platform I had infiltrated. I discovered numerous complaints from school heads about weevil infested maize bags supplied despite assurances from the free SHS coordinator that only a few bags were affected. My observations revealed several bags of maize being treated with neem tree leaves to ward off the pests. Given the critical food shortages, some school heads have conveyed to me their inability to discuss the contaminated maize as there's scarcely enough to feed the students. Someone advised us that we can use the neem tree. So yesterday, we put it outside. The boys put it outside. And, they, and these were given to be fed to yes, the children? Yes, yes, free SHS. And so, oh, they are there a lot. So I was, I'm experimenting. So yesterday we spread it on the, on the ground. We put the neem tree up on it. And we are seeing some reduction and that's what. But is this the work of headmasters? Kwesi Kwating speaks for the Education Ministry. He rejected claims of weevil infested maize supplied by Free SHS Secretariat and blames the situation of isolated cases to poor storage. But I think there was one instance in Western North and also Oti where they said that after the supplies has been made, I think the supply was in excess of what the school ordinarily will need particularly within the week or two and they also have their own uh, storage constraints so what happened is that if there are excess and you are unable to store it well there is a possibility that you may have this weevil infestation and what have you but i think there were 18 bags of 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 this food item in ot for instance and based on the official response that we have from the supplier they were recalled back and replaced that is the only incident where there has been a formal complaint. Gilfred Isiyama is a researcher with the Ghana Center for Democratic Development. He was part of a team that surveyed views from Ghanaians on the free SHS policy. He believes for the free SHS to make sound gains on the education front, the government must be open to suggestions from both policy and practice. He claims cracking down on dissenting views will not augur well for the sustainability of the program. I think um, calls for review um, must be accepted. Um, you have somebody coming from a policy, you have somebody coming from practice, you know. So these heads of senior high schools have genuine concerns and I think it is better for government to actually sit with them and negotiate, you know, um, how to arrange and make sure that the feeding issues you know, are resolved. Um, if you remember issues about feeding, um, especially coming from these um, heads of senior high schools, um, has always become a taboo where people don't talk about it because if you talk about it, you can't predict the consequences that you face. The Ministry of Education embarked on a nationwide monitoring exercise of some selected senior high schools after Joy News released a minute trailer of empty plates, the free SHS promise. Though the spokesperson of the ministry, Kwesi Kwarten, says there is adequate food at the school's stores, these were the experiences students shared with us. We would need more of the balancing of the food. Then, there may be instances where there are not balanced food. But then sometimes I think we would need maybe when we are taking what we will need egg to each person. But then now it's no more. So we pray, we are hoping that they bring it back. We had um, some brown with bread. Is it does it always come with bread? Your breakfast? No, it's not always. Just 
just sometimes, but not always. Yeah. So how often does it come without bread? Yeah, very often. Yeah. Yeah, I think Fridays that we get bread. Some parents have been livid after the education ministry released a statement to indicate that school heads and students are satisfied with the quality and quantity of food served in the various schools. Frankly speaking, I have a ward in one of the secondary schools and every week I have to send him close to 100 CDs to supplement the food he takes from the dining hall. I have took it, one in um, Presec, one in Wesley Girls. It's terrible. I literally have to send food to my son literally every weekend to survive. Hmm. I was with my, my daughter this weekend. She saw me and just broke into tears. That oh. I don't get food to eat. She had grown lean hmm. and I felt it. I mean, a parent you're at home, you cook food, you eat, knowing that your child is in school, doesn't get food to eat. The Conference of Heads of Assisted Secondary Schools, CHAS, in the recent past, made calls for the disbursement of food under the policy to be reviewed to streamline operations and eliminate challenges in food distribution. The Education Minister, Dr. Yawasi Duchum, has rejected this call. He argues that placing such control in the hands of the school heads does not provide a solution to the problem. But former GIMPA rector, Professor Stephen Ade, believes operating the centralized system breeds corruption and questions whether it should be maintained. The more you centralize things, as we do in Ghana by the politicians, the more corruption and inefficiencies you introduce. I don't see why somebody in Accra should tell a headmaster in Avrobo where to get the food and uh, what. So, they must have a, a good reason and they must come and justify what the new system is better than the old. Gilbert puts it succinctly. The free SHS policy has made giant strides in opening the doors for more students who ordinarily wouldn't have been able to afford secondary education. But it is equally important for the government to open up to suggestions rather than antagonizing critical voices. I think it would be better for both the government and those who are actually managing schools to agree on the best way to handle you know, some of these issues. They certainly have genuine concerns over how the feeding you know, um, are being handled. And we, we, we heard you know, in the previous years how some schools went without food for weeks. And these are genuine concerns and I think government should be able to sit with these heads of senior high schools and actually think of a proper way of managing feed. As discussions between policy and practice continue, the urgent need for a well-balanced diet for thousands of students remains unresolved. These food supply irregularities in schools represent just one facet of the broader range of implementation hurdles faced by the free SHS policy.